Peace and love. Peace and love. Yes, I have the quiet one with me today. <laughs> He's only quiet sometimes now, but he has a very quiet demeanor. <laughs> we're um, <clears throat> we're going to be doing something because of the times <laughs> that we're living in. And even though, you know, we are spiritually grounded and we understand prosperity consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, and we get thanks every day <clears throat> for our love and our lives and our home, you know, our friends, our blessings. Every day we get thanks every single solitary day. So we understand that. But we're feeling that there's some important things that need to be talked about from our perspective, from the knowledge that we have, especially him being a historian, you know. <laughs> it's all his fault that I'm even dealing with politics and current events. <laughs> but I get thanks because it's opened my eyes quite a bit. So... Um, one of the things that we've been doing lately, not daily, but we have been studying the Constitution, um, which is a free online course at Hillsdale, Hillsdale College. And one of the things that we see is that the Constitution, with some politicians, is being eroded. And that's not a good thing at all. First Amendment. Second Amendment, you know, it's going to trickle one down. But um, I'm going to let my husband speak since I'm always talking. <laughs> <laughs> and I want him to share, honey, I want you to share, you know, what you feel in regards to the Constitution and what's happening. And, um, and then we'll also get into the emotions that are happening with mm -hmm. people to erode the Constitution even more, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, <clears throat> first, I'd like to say that I view the Constitution as being the law of the land, being the premier or the premier document that this republic is built upon. And we have said often that our democracy, this democracy, um, our form of government is really a constitutional republic, or we can say a representative government or representative democracy, that it is not straight, you know, the majority rules with that. Um, it's 12 o'clock. And one of the reasons when you understand the founding fathers and their thought was that they did not want the minority to serve under the tyranny of the majority. So the idea of a representative government uh, that would represent the people and for them to deliberate and to decide. <clears throat> uh, many of us are in doing of the Constitution, except maybe the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. which uh, has been highlighted during these times that we're going through. Uh, but there are other articles and amendments of the Constitution that you should familiarize yourself with, particularly because you live in this society, this country. Uh, and these are the so-called governing principles. Now, we can raise issues as to whether or not the representatives that we have elected in office are doing their job sufficiently. <laughs> um, I'm sure that when we put many of them under the spotlight, uh, they are not doing what we had selected them to do or they're not fulfilling those things that they said they would fulfill. So there are a number of questions along that line. But I feel that it's very important for us to, to know um, 
the principles upon which our society is built and to see that our society sticks to them. It is our responsibility as the people. We are sovereign as individuals and any consent to rule over us has to be granted by us. So that's just a, a basic thing that we should be aware of. This is true. And you know, I was, um, I remember when we briefly had, you had briefly mentioned it about the belief system. Yeah. When uh, I had, was vending in Queens in front of a supermarket and um, I had gone from one table to two tables and I had lots of products, lots, lots. I had books, I had oils, I had incense, I had baths, I had lots of products. And I would talk to the young people coming home from school and ask them about their day, et cetera, et cetera. And I just had a funny feeling <laughs> that someone was going to get jealous and call the cops because I didn't have a license, you know, to sell my wares, you know. I'm pursuing my happiness. Why do I need your permission? The Constitution gave me permission, you know, but nonetheless, that's a whole other story. So I went to set up one day and this police officer showed up and he said, do you have a license? And I said, no. I said, you know, I don't need a license to pursue, you know, life, liberty and happiness. And, um, and he said something else to me and I said, but you took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. And he said, the Constitution is a belief system. We all have a belief system. <clears throat> and I knew at that point when he said that, I said, there's no talking to this man. If he feels that the Constitution is a belief system and we all have a belief system, then he's not going to uphold his oath of office. So I packed up my stuff and um, I found an indoor place and that's how I found my honey. So thank you all Profi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you think about <laughs> there's two dynamics going on. You have conservatives slash Republicans who have another thought they want their freedom of speech. They should be able to disagree agreeably, agreeably with other people. <clears throat> and then you have the end quote left that has said, shut up. You have no right to talk. And the conservatives slash Republicans have been having their pages taken down. And in many cases, I would think, for truth on a particular subject. Mm -hmm. You know, on Facebook, they've been banned. Uh, they, their accounts have been deleted on Twitter, on YouTube, certain videos, you, you know, the catch words and so forth. But yet and still, the left <clears throat> can pretty much say whatever they want to say. And on college campuses, it's not good. And then people beating people up for their political beliefs. They can't speak. The conservative slash Republican can't speak. And I say conservative slash Republican because everyone who is a conservative is not necessarily a Republican. Okay? They are conservative Democrats. They are conservative Libertarians. They're conservative independents. And what do I mean by conservative? Okay, and honey, you can add to this. What I mean by conservative is basically you believe in the nuclear family, even though you may have a moderate conservative energy around that, you know, because you have family members who are gay. Okay, you know, and if you're just dealing with the nuclear family, then you wouldn't necessarily gay marriages come about. But if you're more moderate, then that doesn't bother you so much. Okay. Um, but you basically believe in the nuclear family. You believe in God, you know, or 
spiritual foundation that's really strong. You know, uh, you believe in good versus evil or good over evil. You believe in love and kindness. You believe in having a good education. You believe in working for what you get instead of can outs all the time. And honey, you want to add to that? Yeah, when you look at the word conservative, the root element there is to conserve, to protect, to keep, to safeguard that which is important. And so when you think of the things that you deem as important and worthy of saving, you, in essence, practice conservatism. Of course, in a political sense, it means much more, but that's sort of the the root element of being a conservative, Mm -hmm. preserving those things which are near and dear that help you to get where you are now. And beyond. Yeah. And also for to conserve what is good for society at large. Yeah, to pass on to each generation. Right. You know, because I would even dare say, I dare say, <laughs> that being conservative deals with prosperity consciousness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Love. It deals with good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. All right. You know, good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. And it also, as a conservative, deals with justice. Okay? Justice in a proper manner, not riots. That's not justice. A riot is not necessarily justice. So some of you all may think that, but when you're burning down businesses, that's not good. Okay. The question is, you know, when you want to tear something down, hopefully you have in mind a, and a plan to replace it with something else. And something better. And something better. Okay. Exactly. But yet and still you're de- destroying someone else's livelihood, someone else's family that you say you care about. Okay. <clears throat> you know, so nonetheless, the Constitution is a document, you know, that speaks to our freedom, speaks to our liberties not being violated by the government. And there are governors and there are mayors that are in violation of the United States Constitution. Okay, if you want to go further and deeper into knowing about the Constitution, okay, then I definitely recommend Hillsdale. This is a plug, but we're not getting paid. Hillsdale College. There's a free course or a series of courses on the Constitution from Hillsdale College. Go online, Mm hillsdale.edu. Hillsdale.edu. Right. And they have more than just the Constitution because the Constitution also goes into the Federalist Papers, which came before the Constitution, Mm -hmm. you know, so they speak about that. But the way they share each lesson, it gives you more of an in-depth study as to what exactly the Founding Fathers had in mind. And I know some of you are going to say, I ain't listening to somebody that had slaves. Well, every, in quote, slave owner did not treat all of their slaves like end quote animals all right you know you have servants if you have help in your house in some ways that could be considered slavery even though you're paying them right so let's not let's not go there indentured servitude Mm -hmm. you know there were a number of people involved in that of all racial backgrounds Mm -hmm. you know and as far as chattel slavery search history and you'll find that all the slaveholders were only white. That there were a number of people of color, that term. Also <laughs> had slaves as well. Exactly. So <laughs> who's really going to be paying reparations? And, but anyway, that, that's another video. <laughs> because I actually really want us to get into the emotions of black folk. <clears throat> And I'm not going to call you all people of color. 
Because everybody is a person of color. So exactly. stop it. But I said that in my last video. Tanya, don't be so emotional and so passionate. <laughs> God, you get so passionate. Can't help it. <laughs> and one of the reasons you met me it. for my passion. <laughs> okay. But the, the energy of color, mm -hmm. communism, mm -hmm. and common sense. So take it away, honey. That book, uh, Color, Communism, and Common Sense, was written in 1958 by a person by the name of Manly Manning. Manning Johnson. That's right. Manning. Manning Johnson. Manning Johnson rose to the ranks of the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. Now, he wrote this book after he got out, and it was written in 1958, and he was black. So, he shared some very interesting information regarding black people involved in socialism, Marxism, and the communist system, and how they are being used and duped into helping to bring down this country. Mm. Since 1938 with Stalin, right, honey? Well, actually, Stalin started in 1928. 20s. Oh, what? In 1920s, sorry. 1928, he had designs of using Black America as a tool to help to promote the Marxist socialist agenda. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that, that, you know, black people were very emotional, okay? Uh, and if you can deal with people's emotions, if you can get them to, to be emotional, when you're emotional, you don't think. You're just being emotional. Mm -hmm. Emotions wipe out thought, okay? So when you're wiping out thought with emotions, when you're only playing on someone's emotions based on skin color or based on class or something of that nature, then you know you've got them. You have their undivided attention, okay. And um, the the first I don't want to call it the insurrection, but the first major um, protest, if you will, was when the Scottsboro boys um, were accused of I think it was raping. Right. Okay, uh, a white woman, and before they were pre proven guilty or innocent, there was communist, you know, material coming out that was saying protest. You know, so that's when protest started, and that's also when the black Bolsheviks mm -hmm. came about. You know, and a lot of the black Bolsheviks ended up going to Russia. You know, because they were very communist oriented and they went to Russia. And when they went to Russia, they were no longer needed. Okay, so they were wiped out. You know, so emotional black folk who are protesting and rioting need to be aware of history, you know, so that they don't repeat it. Okay, the ones who are causing um, the riots, the ones who are leading the riots, you know, they're being used. Yes. Okay. And when you're being used, don't think that the one who set you up is going to keep you if something is overthrown. Okay. So they want to overthrow this country. God forbid. <laughs> but anyway, they want to overthrow this country. God forbid that they should actually achieve that end. God forbid. Thank you. Okay. But let's say <laughs> you have uh, you have these people who are leading, you know, the riots, you know, the organizations, whatever organizations they may be that are headed up by black people, okay, and they rise so called to they rise through the ranks of communism or Marxism or socialism because they gained a lot of followers and they did their job. What will end up happening, because it's already happened, what will end up happening is that 
the powers that be that allowed them to go ahead and do what they did and overthrow one government, they're going to say, okay, well, we are not going to allow you to overthrow this one because you know how to overthrow. So now we're going to get rid of you. They'll be the first ones to go. You know, so it's just a really sad thing. And in the in the book, which is only 14 pages long, and you can get it online, you know, um, social uh, color, communism, and socialism. It comes in PDF form. Common sense. Uh, common sense I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got that socialism thing going on. All right, but here we go. Um, the one familiar with red trickery. It is obvious that placing the blame for all the Negroes' ills at the door of the white leaders in America is to remove all responsibility from the Negro. This tends to make the Negro, A, feel sorry for himself, B, blame others for his failures, C, ignore the countless opportunities around him, D, Jealous of the progress of other racial and national groups. E. Expect the white man to do everything for him. And F. Look for easy and quick solutions as a substitute for the harsh realities of competitive struggle to get ahead. And that's in chapter seven. That's in the chapter is called Creating Hate. That's what that chapter is. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> Hello? Sound real familiar to me. Feel sorry for myself, for himself, because I don't ever feel sorry for myself. That's out. That's too much of a victim. Oh, I can't make it. Oh, the white man is holding me down. Oh, I live in a systemic, racist society with a whole bunch of rich black folk. Mm. Living in a systemic race. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Anyway, okay. So, you feel sorry for yourself. So, you can't do anything for yourself when you're feeling sorry for yourself. And then you want to blame other people for your failures. Okay? That's not taking responsibility for your actions. I mean, my mom and papa raised me better than that. I'm sure yours did too. And if they didn't, well, I don't know. You're old enough now to know better. <laughs> okay? You know, and then... Um, you know, ignoring the countless opportunities that you have around you. Uh, there are so many opportunities. And being jealous of the progress of somebody else, I mean, come on, for real? But we know that does happen. And expecting the white man to do everything for you, why? If I'm doing everything for you, that makes you lazy. You know, and always looking for a quick solution and the substitutes to the harsh realities. You know, what's a quick solution? You know, so... Black people, I'm really asking you, we are asking you, can I say we, honey? Yeah, sure. Don't get caught up in the emotions of what's going on because you're being used. It's not just about feeling. It's also about thinking. Mm -hmm. And developing the ability to be a critical Thinker. Exactly. And on that note, we'll wrap this one up and we'll come back at another time with some other wisdom. Um, and in wrapping it up, I just very, you know, quickly, we give thanks again you know, for love, mm -hmm. for truth, yes. for peace, for freedom, and for justice. We give thanks for prosperity consciousness. We, in all forms, in all forms, we give thanks that you've taken the time to watch this video. Okay? And stay tuned because there will be more. <laughs> Peace and love. <laughs> Enjoy your day. <laughs>